Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to my channel. I hope you are all really well and you had a nice, peaceful Christmas and New Year. So I thought I would just do a little catch up really and just give you an update as to where I am with my breast cancer journey. If you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Leanne. I am 40 and I'm a mum of two boys and they are five and seven. I originally started creating content around food and shopping hauls. I then joined Slimming World in March 22 and started a fairly epic weight loss journey to lose quite a substantial amount of weight. That's been going really well. I've been vlogging about all of that. So I've got a whole playlist of videos around my weight loss and what I eat in a day and things like that. I was then diagnosed with breast cancer in December. So literally three and a half weeks ago, I think. And so I am creating a small amount of content just around that because obviously it's a huge deal. It's a really big part of my life now. And so I just thought I would share some of the journey to try and help anyone who might be going through the same thing or just, I don't know, just for me to look back on. And yeah, so I have created two videos so far, just explaining my diagnosis and how I've been dealing with that. So I will link both of those videos below just in case you wanted to catch up on those. Um, but yeah, so it's been a really busy couple of weeks. It's been really nice. If there's one thing I can say about being diagnosed before, just before Christmas, it's that Christmas was a lovely distraction and because it was such a busy time, it actually made the time just fly by. So yeah, I was really pleased with that. Also, can I just say, I'm really sorry about the background noise. So we have a fish tank and it's just super, super loud, water trickling noise. And I don't really notice it, but I have had a couple of comments to say about it. It's just nothing I can do. We have, the only other place I could film is my kitchen dining room and the washing machine is on and that's even noisier. So yeah, I am sorry if the noise is distracting. Anyway, yeah, so I can't really remember what I said in my last update but essentially I think I was just saying about like my diet and lifestyle choices so that really hasn't been going very well in terms of like my eating and stuff for the last week and a half because of Christmas I went to Slimming World last week so I think it was the 29th my way in and I had gained four and a half pounds so I accepted that you know it was Christmas and I thought I was gonna be really good over Christmas and I thought I was gonna just, you know, keep it contained, but I didn't. I actually went a bit crazy and um, yeah, it was just, it just happened. And I think the most important thing is I just enjoyed myself and you know, four and a half pounds is a lot, but it will soon come off. In fact, it, it may have already, I mean, weigh in is tomorrow, but I actually can't go. But yeah, I, um, I've, I've probably lost, quite a lot of that already so yeah anyway um I have now picked up the diet and health lifestyle again fully um the last few days I've been you know fully embracing it I have made quite a few changes to how I've been eating in comparison to how I was eating before my diagnosis so before I was following Slimming World quite strictly and actually and this is a real, this is a whole other video and I will create a video around this. I think it's really important that I kind of explain my reasons around this, but I am still following Simming World. I'm still going to my Simming World group. I'm still going to my weigh-ins. I love my Simming World group and I think the plan really does work for me, but I am having to tweak it slightly and that's because I don't think that Simming World is necessarily the healthiest plan. Yes, it gets you thinking about the um, eating a lot of the fruit and vegetables, which is obviously so important. But I do think there's a lot of things that we end up eating in large quantities um, that, that really don't do us any favours for our health. And, you know, lots of artificial sweeteners, lots of 
yogurts that are really high in sugar and yeah i think that i am still following it but i'm making different choices so for example all of my sins go on healthy fats um so i've been sinning extra virgin olive oil um avocado oil coconut oil lots of oil avocados chia seeds sunflower seeds all that kind of thing and I think, especially when you have a cancer diagnosis, that that kind of nutrition is really important. So yeah, I'm gonna do a video around that though, because I think, you know, for people that are starting out on a weight loss journey, and if you're joining Slim World particularly, um, there's some, definitely some things to consider and things to think about when you're doing it. But anyway, um, that's for another video, so I'll park that for now. But yeah, so that's how I've been approaching things. Um, I've been drinking lemon and ginger tea, in the morning so when i say tea i've literally been drinking fresh lemon and ginger root slices in hot water and i've been having that every morning when i get up and it's so good and i th i actually think it's making me feel more energized and yeah i feel actually feel the best i've felt in quite a while which considering i've have a cancer diagnosis is a bit crazy but yeah so the first week of the school holidays was very hectic. I wanted the boys to have as many play dates with their friends as I could, because obviously after surgery, I'm gonna be a little bit less able to cope with having their friends over and things. So I wanted to get a lot of that in. So they, they saw loads of their friends. I did also have two hospital appointments that week. I had them uh, two days in a row, so it was quite full on. So my first hospital appointment I had was my lymph nodes ultrasound. So that was a really quick appointment actually. I literally just went in, they got the ultrasound scanner and they literally scanned under my arm. They scanned the, the cancer lump again to just, I don't know, just check it out I think, make sure they could see it because actually I didn't talk about this very much but when I had the biopsy, um, I can't remember my specific, the name of my specific biopsy, but they use like an, a piece of equipment that um, it almost like reminded me of a staple gun to take the sample. And um, the consultant said he takes three samples. So he did it three times. And I, I didn't experience much in the way of pain at all but the bruising was horrendous. I honestly had the most, oh, it was horrendous. And when I went, so when I went for my results and the consultant examined me again, he couldn't actually feel that, we couldn't feel the lump because I had a huge lump from the biopsy and the swelling and everything. And that didn't subside. I mean, that's, it has subsided now. I would say it subsided in the last week, but yeah, it was horrendous. So the consultant kind of said he needed um, to get like a markup done on my skin. So yeah, so basically I went into the ultrasound and originally I, I was told they were gonna, might do the markup at that appointment, but they didn't. So she just scanned the lamp, said she could see it and you know, all was fine. Then she did a ultrasound on my underarm and checked the lymph nodes. Um, that was extremely nerve wracking. I really just, I, I feel so anxious about the lymph nodes, um, obviously, because the last thing we want is cancer to be found in the lymph nodes. Um, but thankfully, I was told that my lymph nodes look normal, so I didn't need to have any further tests done at that point. So that was really good. I actually asked her in the appointment there and then, I said, does everything look okay? She said, yeah, everything looks normal. So that's great. There was no like swelling in my lymph nodes or anything like that. Then the next day I had to go back for my pre-op assessment. Now, this appointment was really overwhelming. If you've had surgery, you've probably had one of these appointments. I think it's a fairly standard one. I don't think it's, you know, cancer specific or anything like that. I literally went to the pre-op unit. So I presume they do pre-ops for all surgery and there was just so much. So I had to have an ECG because I get a lot of heart palpitations. So they, they wanted to do that. I had to have MRSA swabs. 
So they give you a swab stick and you have to take a swab from your nose and then from your groin as well. But he let me do that myself, which was a relief. <laughs> and I had my blood pressure taken. Then I had, uh, what else do I have? My height and my weight and all of that sort of stuff. Then he took me to another room where there was another nurse. She was absolutely lovely. And she just asks loads of questions, you know, about like medical history and um, oh, just loads of things. So yeah, just if you're having a pre-op, just be prepared for just all of the questions because there is loads of them. Um, I got told in that appointment that my BMI was 33, which I was absolutely thrilled about because when I started my weight loss journey, my BMI was between 45 and 46. Um, the nurse said that because my BMI was 33, I wouldn't need like a, a anaesthetic review or anything. It, sh it, it was all fine. So yeah, I know that on the BMI chart, 33 is still, you know, high. But for me, I was absolutely made up with that. So yeah, so um, we did all of that. And then um, that was it. So then after that appointment, everything just went really quiet. We had Christmas. I basically got my cancer folder, put it in a cupboard, shut the door. And I was like... I'm shutting the door on cancer for the next week, basically. I just want to forget about it um, and just enjoy Christmas. So that's what I did. And then over the last few days, I've had a few phone calls. So on the 30th, I had a call from my breast care nurse. So when you're diagnosed, I, I presume this is the same in all areas of the UK, um, you get assigned a breast care nurse who is directly your nurse. So she's my nurse for five years. And so I have a direct number for the breast care nurses. And so if there's anything I need to ask at all, or I've got any concerns or worries, I can just call them direct. And that means I don't have to go through my GP anymore. So that's really handy. So she called me and she just wanted to just check everything was okay. She went through all of the instructions and stuff for surgery day. And then she told me that I was going to be second on the list. So I'd be going to theatre about 11 in the morning. So I would need to make sure I was fasting from midnight the night before and that I could drink clear fluids until 6 a.m. of the morning of surgery. So that was quite good news to me to, to kind of be uh, having my surgery early on in the day. And then yesterday I got a phone call from the nurses to say that my um, time had changed so they've had to swap things around because there's someone who's more of a priority which I totally understand um, but it just means that now I won't be going to theatre until the afternoon so I can have um, a light breakfast and I think I can have a coffee as long as I stop by seven in the morning I have to be at the hospital at seven anyway so um, yeah that's quite nice to think I can have a little something to eat in the morning um, so surgery is tomorrow Thursday the 5th and so today is my last day before it all happens. I took today off work actually because I've just I've just got so much to do. Actually, I've done a lot this morning. I've done loads actually of housework this morning. It's already it's only ten o'clock and upstairs is pretty much done. So I just need to now crack on with downstairs. Um, I'm packing my bag for hospital because now I'm having surgery in the afternoon. There's a very good chance that I won't come home tomorrow. Hopefully, I will. But yeah, there's a good chance, depending on how I recover from the anaesthetic, um, that I'll have to stay in hospital. So I'm just making sure that I've taken lots of things and I've also packed loads of Slimming World magazines because I just haven't had time to read them properly. And so I'm going to be waiting around a lot tomorrow. So I've packed three of my, all three of my recent Slimming World magazines that I haven't had a chance to read properly and I thought I could sit and make a note of some good recipes and things so yeah that's where I'm at really I think I might vlog my surgery day I'm also going to try filming some what I'm eating because it's the new year and I know there's people looking for motivation and inspiration and I am I am really hitting the healthy eating hard like I actually feel so good for it and everything I'm eating is just nutritious and healthy and yeah I, I really feel different compared to how I felt before Christmas so if you have any questions so if you're going through something similar or you're supporting someone who's going through it you have any questions at all 
please do let me know in the comments below. I always respond to my comments and or you can contact me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram link below. I'm not an expert at, by any means, but from the from the process I've, I've been through so far, I can try and answer any questions that you might have. So yeah, my next update is gonna be my surgery video. Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling really. I think I've been so busy, I haven't really thought about it. And I think probably, I'm actually feeling quite chilled out now. I was feeling quite anxious about it, but at the end of the day, you know, they're gonna take this cancer out. Hopefully, they're gonna just take it all out and it will all be gone. That's, you know, that's kind of, you know, what more could I, could I wish for? Positive thinking and all of that. So yeah, thank you as always so, so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.